Count me in. Count me in. And Make three, two, one. Kenny. Ladies and gentlemen, Gary Kroger. Thank you very much. Well, there I am. Welcome to the Gary and Kenny Show. As Kenny just said, I am Gary Kroger in Waterloo, Iowa, and I'm joined by Kenny Seisler in in Calabasas, California. All right, but enough Ken. about me. Enough about Let's you. Let's talk to Owen because we you may be up on talk the to clock. Owen Mackin right now. Yep. All right. Well, I'm Owen. I'm going to give you an introduction. Right. Oh, I'll take All it. Right. One of those. Uh, Owen Mackin is an actor writer, director, very busy man, as we've been trying to get him on this podcast for eight years now. Uh, wow. He was in Australia filming La Brea, which, of course, is La Brea in Los Angeles. We'll talk about that. Uh, he plays Gavin Harris. Uh, he was off to Ireland to film a movie, and we're going to ask him about that. But now we finally got him in L.A. for a couple of weeks because he's a friend of Kenny's son. He agreed to do our show. Welcome, the yeah. very handsome Owen Mackin. Hello, Owen. Thank hey, you very much for having me, guys. Appreciate it. Thank you for your patience and uh, finally setting this up across oh, a bunch no. of different times. It's, it's not patience. We're, we're, there. we're there. thrilled if anyone does our show. Okay, so <laughs> let's get to the let's get to the point. First of all, Owen, I want you to move the camera back so we can see the top of your head. Right. How's that? Really better. A little bit. Now, this little is more, or lean in. This is, okay. this is your place in 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 L.A. This is my this is my writing my writing room. Yeah, but I've got Zoom on my on my phone. But yeah, you got I, a, a, a dry erase over here. You you've got a safari hat. I do. Cool. I do. I, I, I like got a, the dry eraser because I I write notes on it, and you know it's. You know, I, I do the same it, thing. Yeah, it's incredibly helpful, right? Because sometimes I, I used to find myself sitting in a coffee shop writing all the time using two laptops, and I was like, you know, it'd be great if I could just write on the wall here. Huh. So the first thing I did when I moved to this new place was basically put some as many sort of dry erasers and big sort of like paper things on the wall so I can just write stuff. The only problem I hate, though, is then I write stuff on the wall, tear it down to go into a new thing, and then I have to stick the other stuff back up. And then, then I look like I'm in a Fincher movie and I look like a lunatic. But well, do you get the, the little baffled when you write something up there and you go, should I erase this or not? Does the del of like sh is this because is this idea gone. over and let's move what? on? That's the problem. Then you're taking a photograph of it, taking yeah. a photograph of the notes, deleting them, and then you're like looking at your phone and the notes anyway. And I'm like, I'm not sure what the purpose of this is, but yeah. I feel like I've achieved something. But let's go. Let's let's go. Right. So you've been busy. You've been doing La Brea. This is the third third year of La Brea. Third year. Yeah. You were in third Australia for how long? uh probably about 17 years no we were there for <laughs> a total in total almost two years but, La Brea, but like this last to do a season how long were you down there well the the last season we only did three and a half months because we got cut the we got cut in half because of the, the impending writer strikes with the right. shot with that out before before the no, strike may i ask why yeah. Australia? I mean, it is La Brea. It is La Brea, that, as so, we know La Brea. Yeah, well, so so originally the pilot was shot in Canada, but then then when, when COVID happened, we ended up shooting, we shot in Australia, because Australia, I don't know if you remember, go go back when COVID was happening, and everywhere around the world was shut down, except for Australia. Yeah, and they had Australia. All these, they, do you remember they had all these festivals and parties, and there's all yeah. these pictures of like 40,000 Australians at a festival, and everyone was like really, like, you know, jealous. So a lot of American productions moved to Australia then in that first year of COVID because they're open and they've got a really good film industry there and they've got a lot of great crews. So when we moved there to Melbourne, we were like, this is fantastic. I'd been in a lockdown in like LA, Ireland, London, suddenly in Australia. And then Australia locked down about four weeks later. And we had the most intense lockdown in Melbourne pretty much in the entire world. And then everywhere else was open. And everywhere in, everywhere in LA and Ireland <laughs> right, right. were having parties. And we were in a lockdown. So... Now, so people don't, who don't know, La Brea, uh, I guess, is named after the fact that there is in Los Angeles the tar a place called the La Brea Tar Pits. Now, did you know yeah. about the La Brea Tar Pits before, Owen? I did. I've, I've been there. I've been there as a tourist. Well, that's because you've probably been yeah. to L.A. and known about it. But I don't know if a well, lot of people wait, know wait, wait. that it's a real place. Yeah, well, you know, when I first came to L.A., I don't know, you know, you guys are, you guys are from here or whatever, you live here. When you first move to a place, you do all the touristy stuff. Of right. course. Right. Right. When I first came here, I did everything. And you go to the Getty and you go to Malibu and you go to La Brea Tar Pits and you go and you see the lights and you kind of wander around. And yeah. So I lived four blocks west of the La Brea Tar Pits. 
Never oh, went yeah. there once. Never went there once. Well, that's like I lived in New York and I never went to like, you know, the Statue of Liberty. Go, right, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I mean, that's like I'm, I, I'm from Dublin and I don't think I've ever been to Christchurch or seen the Book of Kells. You know, <laughs> you never nah. toured the Guinness factory. So is no, the premise. Never, I've, I've never toured the Guinness factory ever. For real. Ever. So is it the premise twice. of the show yeah, that. Like, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> so in the premise of the show is that they, your, I guess your family, were they at like the museum at the La Brea Tar Pits and all of a sudden there was a giant sinkhole and that's how they ended up no, back in I, time I, I don't i don't think his family are that cultured in this show but yeah, <laughs> they were just, they were just driving past the libre oh why and they were they were they were, they were, they were on wilshire <laughs> they were on wilshire they were right on the corner there of wilshire and the Brea. yeah no the show was it was set on the Brea because david Applebaum the show and i had this had this concept of this sinkhole opening up right on the Brea and sucking all these people into it Right. So, and then it links because it happens to be in 10,000 BC. So, there's certain things that happen in Labrea tar pits. Like in those tar pits, they found like camels and various other animals. Right. So, you go back 10,000 years, and that's where they kind of like this sort of parallel. Now, when you life. go back 10 to 10,000 BC, is Raquel Welch there at all in her? We looked at her. Is Ringo there? <laughs> yeah, we, we, we looked. We looked. No. We yeah. 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 No. I had that poster. No, it's a fantastic premise. And the show's doing extremely well. Yeah, it's been good. It's been good. I think yeah. our third season, we come out the third season comes out, I think, in January, February. Um, I think obviously this year all got a little bit messed up fairly. So we're, we're kind of, I think this third season airs sometime, I think, January. Well, February. Kenny's very suspicious of shows with sinkholes, aren't you? Any, no, anything no, 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 that, no, no, that no, centers no, around the thing a that hole. I wonder, The thing that I wonder when I watch the show, especially for actors, and because I'm such a cynic anyhow, is that when you're in a show like this and you're attacked by dinosaurs and beasts and these incredible things and you as an actor are standing there and the director's going... You have no idea what's coming at you. And you're looking He's at describing a piece of to you like state. a dinosaur. What are you looking at when you're petrified? Problem is, I, I'm a cynic like you, so <laughs> so I so I, I I need a little bit of context. You know, uh, I need to know what's going on. Go what's going on here? They did this thing, which was really which is really fun, especially this year, where where the the. The production design team and the, and the kind of the, the the VFX team they'd actually build these sort of semi to scale uh, cardboard cutout models of rhinos and stuff. Yeah, and so okay. They, so they do they do them for the full length, and like two or three people would have them on sticks or on stilts and tied by rope okay. and kind of move it around. Do the context of like scale and size and yeah. stuff. Yeah, because otherwise you're just scared, staring at. A and push. that works for and, you, or it strikes well, me as a little mean, humorous. It, 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 it's better than the tennis ball, right? Yeah, right. right. Or a piece of gaffer's like, tape. Yeah, they right. wave the green tennis ball around, and you're kind of just like all looking <laughs> in different directions. And, and Can you give us a down. face? Can you, you give us a reaction? Yeah. Oh, yeah, do you have like a? Well, a I've got a I, this is a dinosaur, oh, and this is a, a giant mammoth. Do you have a two different looks yeah. for that? Do you know? <laughs> give us <laughs> any look. Any, any, any look. Ah, Excellent. that's a dinosaur. That's that definitely because yeah, you're dinosaur. looking up. But I had to be really still so the dinosaur didn't see me. Uh -huh. you know? And there was a little uh -huh. bit of yeah disbelief in your eyes too. You couldn't believe what you were seeing. I picked it all I up. Really right couldn't there. believe there's a dinosaur. And yeah, and I'm glad you got it was that. twelve meters high. There was a lot of subtext going on in that look. I know that. Yeah, yeah. as <laughs> as there is behind your head, it's like a yeah. dolly meets William Blake. Oh so now yeah. I well, well, I've got a bunch of different. I always try and, I, you know, wherever I, I've been lucky enough to, to travel a lot of places when I've been filming. So I always try and 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 bring back some art or something from wherever I've been, um, just to kind of kind of remind me of it, or just trying to find a really cool artist and so forth. So, well, you so went cool from hobby. Australia. You went from Australia back to Ireland to do another movie. I was doing a, doing a, doing a project, doing a show in Ireland, which for the over the summer. Um, an Irish equity project. So we just finished that like last week. So you fly from Australia to Dublin? I came back here for four days um, to, to oh, just to watch. Cause I was wondering, watch. is there a direct flight from Ireland to Australia? There, well, you oh got to go God. via you buy or Singapore. So it it's be actually easier, it's easier to go easier. east. Yeah, pretty much. It's almost easy. Well, it's kind of ends up being the same. It's as easy almost to come to LA. Yeah. You know, have, a, have, a, have a coffee, go to Starbucks and then carry on. 
I mean, it's a long flight. I mean, what is it? And and when even when I was talking to you or, or trying to set this up, and you were in Australia to try to get those days right, we were like, well, we'll schedule for a Monday, which wasn't our Monday; it was his Tuesday. <laughs> like, do you know? Do you know? Honestly, for almost two years, and I mean this with all the love in the world to Australia, because I made a lot of friends there, and I, I really loved filming in Australia. But you end up being sucked into this vortex where there's people I know who moved to Australia, and you don't hear from them ever, ever again because. <laughs> Well, it just gets really and difficult. And then there's the sinkhole. Well, then, yeah, they all disappear into sinkholes. They're eaten by dinosaurs. And you're like, hey. He says, no, but they, it just becomes a time zone thing. becomes different. And you're trying to organize on Monday. And you realize it's your Wednesday morning. And it's Monday night. Uh, how, how long can you remain this busy? I mean, are you loving it? Or it's like, okay, two more years. And, and I've got to have a more sensible location, time, schedule, whatever. No. I'm always on a holiday. I'm I'm always happy to go to work. I think I think honestly, going going to work and and working in this industry is like my favorite thing. I, I always feel you know this is a handsome guy who's to have a job. Yes, absolutely. This is a handsome guy who's traveling the world and is a celebrity yeah, and whatever. Right. And I'm supposed to feel sorry for him, Gary. Is that right. really what? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> come on, come on. Feel sorry for me here. No, <laughs> handsome guy, handsome guy with an Irish accent. I'm not even telling my wife about this show. <laughs> Let me ask you well, that question. Uh, do you do you use the Irish accent in the uh, in your character as Gavin, no, or you, I, you're I, American? I, I, I never get asked to do an Irish accent. No, you don't. Like, what, in Merlin? No. What about Merlin? Merlin, I did a... I don't know what accent I did. I think I did a weird weird British hybrid accent on that. But why would you... Do, I was, I was going to do a Scottish accent on that because I didn't want to do my own accent. I turned up on the day of the read-through to do this Scottish accent. And I don't know how, I don't know how you guys find this, but I always find that first day or the first two days and you're working with a bunch of new people it's always like being in school and you're kind of feel special yeah and then after three days you're all best friends it's fine but that first day you're like fuck i don't want to say the wrong thing and i walked in to do this read through on merlin and the uh uh the, the director of that episode david was scottish and he opens with this big scottish brogue and he starts talking to me in this big scottish accent and i was like i can't i can't do a fucking scottish no. accent here Fuck. It's a hard so, one. Yeah. So, yes, I just made up some fucking accent on the you table. Just made some... <laughs> and I was like, well, I'm stuck with that now. It's like, all right. Yeah, you so can. Uh, an, can an Irishman appropriate a Scottish accent? And can a Scottish person appropriate an Irish? I would think that's kind of like, you know, yeah, just you get know. a Scottish actor or just get an what? Irish actor. Yeah, just the Irish you, you, see you, you, apart. You know, I was just trying to do something a little bit different, but it I backfired and I didn't get very far. I didn't even get past the read through. You know, yeah. I was always the guy on any, and I'm retired, but in any movie set, in any language, the crew, I would become, like you say, very acclimated and friendly with the crew after a couple of days. They would always teach me how to say, I have a very big dick in any language. Oh, good. That's helpful. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I learned it. Ya ima veliki kurats, if you're ever in Croatia. Right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> See, you learn things on this show. <laughs> yeah. I usually just. I usually just learn like when you go to Serbia or Bulgaria, you learn what rakia is, and they and, and they just they're just like rakia will get you really drunk really quick, and I'm like great, I'll just have that. <laughs> you never can you never had rakia? It's like no, I didn't, but I just thought that would be a great idea if you put together a book of all the important phrases you should know in certain cities that'll either get you late or get you drunk. Yeah, ima veliki kurats. There you go. And Write I got one down. Put, put that on the white together. dry erase. Put there that on go. the whiteboard. We'll yeah. add your we'll add your we'll add your phrase, Gary, with with I've got Rakia and the two of them together are like there you go. So you have to play do the American accent. Did they tell you you can't because what what would be the big deal? Your wife could have married a guy from Ireland, right? You could have been Irish. Yeah, yeah. I mean it could could be anything at this stage. I think people yeah. are a lot it, 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 I don't know. I mean, I think it depends. I think uh, uh, it's not even as the way it used to be like 15, 20 years ago, I think, because the world is so much more kind of like multicultural and kind of like. Well, you know, so, it used to be. I mean, it's a the, the phenomenon that I think most Americans are recognizing now that we're seeing all these shows like Succession and Billions in which all you have these actors from Ireland or the UK, rather from the UK. Right. And then we all discover, hey. Yeah. when they go to do an interview, they're either British or Irish or whatever. And I think a lot of people yeah. are like, oh, my God, don't we have an American second act? Well, well I, yeah, we, there's, there's a lot of American actors. I, I think, no, I, think I know. Very, you know but, well, I, I found the same with Christian Bale. I always thought Christian Bale was American. Yeah, I, I did too originally. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah, Absolutely. and then every now, and then you hear him do an interview, and you're like, "Wait, you're you like, you're Welsh?" I was like, "Well, hold on a second." Oh, and listen to me very carefully. I have what's known as a classic American non-dialect accent. Right, I am, and per- I am, and personality. Learn, by the way, I'm actually, I'm actually, I am recording, what you learn in the person. textbook to speak English. There's no yeah. dialect in my from my region. So, well, All I'm right. actually recording this Zoom right now to 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 kind of save your voice here. And on that note, since we're Owen, does anybody ever spell your name correctly? Do no. they see it and ever say it correctly? No. So I, I even find the same when I come back in the airport and I go to immigration that they, they have they have no idea how to pronounce it. So it, it's it's but I mean I think it always used to get me through immigration when I was younger and in like college and stuff because we had spent half the time just trying to figure out what my name meant. And then is it an end up, is there some, is there a meaning to it that it ended up being spelled that way? No, he, no it's just, just in it's debt. He's it's Owen. Just that no, it's just that in Irish, in, in Gaelic, a, a lot of like Irish, uh, there's a thing called um, called a father, which is like the French accent, and it just kind of goes over certain letters and just kind of silences them. So I am kind of curious about this. Um, Owen was born and raised in in Dublin, and. And you were grown up in a time when, and I find it, talk about understatements in terms of description. They called it the Troubles. Right. The war between the Protestants and the the Northern Islands and the UK and the British and the whole thing. It was just Troubles. Mm -hmm. We we called ours a civil war. This was right. the well, troubles. some of some people in the South still call it the trouble, the troubles between the states. Well, it was, whatever, but so, but does did that shape your life at all? What was going on? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 not as prevalent now as it used to be, although it's still there, uh, uh, and and it's it's still there's still an undercurrent of it, and I think Brexit is kind of sort of reawoken just to, just a to yes. touch of it. Um, I spent some time up there recently, just kind of talking to some to some cops over over the border in Northern Ireland about that, and they still have kind of issues with it. But but compared to the eighties and nineties, it, it's 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 nothing like oh, it yes. at all. If you ever watched like any Jim Sheridan movies, like In the Name of the Father or The Boxer, mm-hmm. and so forth, yeah, yeah, sir. And, and and that's pretty much. But but that was, I guess, a lot of that was the eighties, and I was very young in the nineties. So I kind of grew up. I remember very distinctly, like now. Ireland playing England in like an international sport, especially because of rugby, because rugby has become so popular. It happens every year, so it's not a big deal anymore. Uh-huh. But in the 90s, Ireland played England in, in a soccer, a football match, uh, and and the, the game got abandoned after like 25 minutes. I think David Kelly scored. And all the English fans at the time tore up the uh, tore up the stadium, and the match was abandoned. So all through like the eighties and nineties, you couldn't have Ireland playing England in any form of international sport because there would always be it always be a. a was your family political? Did your family have a did, did you have a position? No. In other words, was 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 there conflict even among your friends? <laughs> No, no, no. And I, I went to a school that, that was kind of mixed. It was kind of part Catholic and part Protestant. But there was there was definitely that delineation, especially in the 90s and 80s about it. But but it's kind of, I think as people have grown up, I, I you know, it's kind of, it's softened, obviously, politically. Bill Clinton had a huge amount to do with that as well with the Good Friday. Hmm. But I, I, I do think that, that sport has, has had one of those things where it's softened a lot of kind of just general attitudes separate to politics and stuff. Because when when you end up with kind of like people following sport in a certain way, then I think it's sort of like a lot of Irish people follow British football teams, you know? Yeah. Like someone like we all follow like Manchester United and Liverpool. A lot of Irish players used to play for those. So I think there's always been, you know, it's kind of just slowly just softened over the years. And now I now I don't think it's 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 yeah, it's, I just yeah. wondered whether it impacted you as a filmmaker. Did you see the movie Belfast? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful movie. Yeah, beautiful movie. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it 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 did. I guess I haven't. I guess I guess it probably has because the, we've always had a very strong sense of Irish identity, and and we're always very much not not English. So every now and again, you might hear of like you know an Irish actor or an Irish uh, a golfer or, or 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 kind of like sporting person, and they're referred to as being British in like the British press, and we get very upset about that. Yeah. So the British the British would appropriate. Colin Farrell or Saoirse Ronan, whenever it's right, as one of their own. 
Yeah, right. they were getting nominated for for an Academy well, Award. It, for me, you know, it's like British actor. You're like, no, no, we're not British. We're well, and British. you have that in common with with Scotland because my wife and I were just in Scotland. So are you, Kenny? Yeah. And there there's a camaraderie with Irish because yeah. they feel they want to be separate as well. They don't want to be just part of, of Great Britain. Who drinks Britain, more? Known as Who drinks England more to the north? Well, Scott, I mean, I, 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 I unfortunately, you know what? I'm going to get in trouble for this, but I actually prefer Scotch whiskey to Irish whiskey, and I get in trouble for that. But I, so I think the Scots, the Scots have probably got better drinking habits. They you think? Food. I prefer Scotch. Yeah, I prefer a peaty Scotch. I want there to be a campfire in my mouth. So I right. like the Island Scotches very right. much. And Lefroy, that's very, very yeah, Lefroy Lagavulin. Is oh, absolutely. Yeah. I've got yeah. some Ardbeg right behind me here. Okay, yeah. I, I, I'm more of I'm more of a McCallum or a Glenfiddich. Oh, I McCallum is unbelievable. Yeah. McCallum is unbelievable. I'm, I'm a big fan of of, of Nick and Abiki, though. I think Japanese oh. whiskey is fantastic. Now, what about beer? Are you a beer drinker as well? I don't. I don't really drink beer. Me no. either. I'm not a beer drinker either. Yeah. No. But I always found that, like you know, I used to even even though I could go and play like play uh, play football after drinking whiskey. But you drink beer, I can't even walk straight. So it's like, what's the point? You know, yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, Owen, are are you back yeah. in Ireland anytime soon? Back in Dublin anytime soon? I'm saying this because my wife and I are going to go there. Oh, <laughs> so you're going to say, "Oh no, I won't be back for quite a while." No, I, I won't be back till Christmas. We, we'd love to and... tour the uh, Guinness factory with you. Oh, well, when are you going to go? Uh, it won't be next April. Next April. Well, I we. Know. I, I I have no idea if I'll be there in April. I'm a good time. Uh, I'm a good time. Yeah. On. I know. I, be, time. I I believe it. I've, if I'm in Ireland, I'll definitely go to the Guinness factory. Yeah. I've actually never been, so I'm actually overdue a visit. But you know, by, well, by well we were going to come back for the holidays, Owen, but we are not yeah. because because Jackie's pregnant. Oh. My goodness, you're going to tell me this over a Zoom? <laughs> I thought he would have told you already. <laughs> I meant I meant to see Jared like this weekend. I, I think Jared, well, you I, embarrassed I think him I, now. I think I probably, uh, you know, uh, yeah, oh, sure I didn't Jared, know that. I, I would have thought he would have told you. I haven't I haven't talked to him yet because I'm going to see him. This is fantastic news. I love the fact yeah. that I get to hear this over a Zoom. I'm glad we're good, good for them. That's brilliant. Uh, it is brilliant. We're so happy, so delighted. It'll be great, yeah. Yeah. yeah, holy yeah. folks! Holy I folks. suppose you're going to be an they're, uncle. They're, they're, You'll they're, be an uncle. They're, they're, what? They, I know. Yeah. I mean, well, I'm a terrible babysitter, so I won't be there. I'll be in a different country. <laughs> yeah. You'll still have to send gifts. Well, well, of course. I mean, that's compulsory, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. That, that is, isn't that the, isn't that the main reason why you make somebody a godfather? Just so you can give of course gifts. it is. Of course yeah, it so is. Whatever. And and for the babysitting duties. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, you must be thrilled. I am. We are over the moon about it. We really are. And we love her with such a passion. So, it's Owen, so it, it, Jack, Jack, Jackie's wonderful. She really is. I know. I'm not digging for dirt or anything, but you're a, yeah. you're a, like I keep mentioning. You're a handsome young man. You know, at you're the top sweet. of your game. Are you going to say you have a big Thanks, dick Gary. in a foreign Gary, language, Gary? You know, no, Gary, no, we're, we're I'd past love, that. I'd love to go on a date with you, Gary. Whenever you want, let's let's uh, have a date. Uh, I, I, you know what? I'm not going to even rule that out. I'm just looking for all new adventures. But my point is, are you just oh, really enjoying awesome. bachelorhood? Are you just having a great time? I mean, are you going to get you know, married anytime soon? What's the game plan? I, I, well, well to, get, to get married, there, there's usually the, the, the necessity to be in a relationship. That's what I found to be like the first port of call to getting married. So I, I've been, I've been, the last couple of years, I've been doing so much traveling. It's kind of been, that is, is made it more difficult to have a relationship. To be honest, because I've been moving countries so many times and also in different places. Well, it would be so, hard to have a relationship, but I mean, do you see yourself as a guy having your own little babies and things and making, you know, Jared and an, an uncle to babysit? And I don't, I don't, I don't really know. I, 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 future. No. Yeah, yeah. No. I mean, I no, no. no and, uh, right, right, right now, right now, I don't think that's that's me. Oh, well, that's the answer I was looking for, actually. <laughs> so, is this where we're supposed to? Is this where we're supposed to go? To, uh, to the, sorry, ladies. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, when, yeah, sorry, girls. He's not committing. <laughs> yeah. Actually, maybe that's not sorry. That's like exciting. All right. What is you know, it? I, I, this could I, go I, viral. I, I think I'd probably lose children. You know, I, I don't even have a dog, so I mean, I, I don't think I'd be able to take care. I, I struggle trying to keep my plants alive. You know, you 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 even have the good bedhead going, Owen. You even have good bedhead. 
Deadhead. I, well, I, well, I was. Well, I mean, I'm I expressing a, a little. I am, I am man only crush here, aren't I? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I haven't had a share. I am only just out of bed. I will be honest with you. Um, so I, I, I told do, you, Gary. Uh, I was having breakfast in the sunshine when I realized I was like, I gotta, I gotta jump on for the. But well, that's why I said eleven because you know eleven is like a time when I can be sure I'll woken up, woken up by ten ish, ten thirty ish. You know. Well, hence how by, do you? Hence by, hence by, I'm still having coffee, so well, I don't how do you? Like, you're, how, you're, you're literally sitting on my coffee pot. That's how do you manage? I mean, I know we talked about it, but how do you manage the time zones? I mean, I find it very difficult to go to. Europe, and then it takes me at least a day to adjust, or I mean, even a couple of days. You're all over the place. How? Do, yeah, you no, I mean, I wouldn't, I, wouldn't even back, I wouldn't even back like five or six days. I think I'm still pretty much jet lagged. That's my excuse. Jet lagged, and and I, but I find the best way to go over jet lag is to is to have a hangover. Yeah, yeah, okay. They they usually usually get you through it. You know, they mean by hair of the dog. Yeah, you know, well, when you get you a... back in the time zone pretty quick. You know, what is the they... etymology of hair of the dog? Yeah, they could when you get drunk and you wake up, and then they say, Hey, you know what? Hair of the dog, and you get drunk again. Yeah, What's, you, why you is guys it the hair of the dog? I'll look it up. I actually, I actually don't know where that came from. Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I what suppose that... the person who came up with it was drunk at the time. Originally, <laughs> yeah, probably, probably. I, I, are I you ready? Go you asked it. a question. Yeah. Yes, hair originally, the, dog. the expression referred to a method of treating a rabid dog bite. Hair from the dog was placed in the wound. So in that sense, having another drink, any drink, is like taking hair from the dog that bit you. That so is wait, the so, origin so of the, hair of the dog. If you were bitten by a dog with rabies, you you put the dog's hair in your wound and just... Well, and you by the way, place yes. the hair in the wound. And the person yeah. who came up with that was also drunk at the time. Well, and you might said be able to... to you were right. They, they it was a Neanderthal that came up with that. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to ask you about that. Neanderthal. So when you go back 10,000 BC, La Brea takes place. 10, 000, Which has got to be jet lag. Right. No, when you go back 10,000 BC, yeah. there were Neanderthals at that time. Do you meet Neanderthals in the show? We don't. I don't know. Were, were they Neanderthals in 10,000 yes, BC? Yes, I looked it up. As a matter oh, of fact, did. and I'll tell you something else. I did the, the DNA thing. I'm 1% yeah. Neanderthal. Are you? Yeah. I think Aren't we all? Like, you see maybe a little... Every human? I mean... Yep. It turns out that uh, Homo sapiens and Neanderthals actually uh, fucked each other. Well, of course right. they did. Right. Because they'll... Oh, the Neanderthal I'd fuck a Neanderthal. I have no problem with that. I, I'd fuck a Neanderthal. Would you Would fuck you a Neanderthal? Fuck I mean, I guess who? I guess it depends what if you're in 10,000 BC or what's what's going on. I guess you might not. Have okay, a let's say body. there's a direct link to a Neanderthal. It has been an un, unbroken chain. So a Neanderthal yeah. woman presented herself to you, mm -hmm. and you know basically what she looks like. You're mm -hmm. you're saying you would you would fuck her? You know, my basic rule is consent. <laughs> You see, Owen, I never, I can go down that that alley, and I'm never disappointed with Kenny. I, I, I can tell, I can tell. I, I, I never, I didn't know where this was going for a second. No, and but I was like, I was like, all on you. It Ken. was worth it. It was worth it. <laughs> yeah. All right. I don't even, I don't even care if it's not all real. Like guys will say, "Oh my God, those tits are phony." So. <laughs> It, it, it's something hey, you don't, don't have, and so it's, you're yeah, yeah, and it. it's percentage wise. If you are a majority woman, <laughs> and and forty so percent plastic and percentage, right, and, and 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 right. If if, the, if there's less plastic than there is flesh, I'm okay with that. Well, you know hey, what it is for me. This is what yeah, happens Ema, when you're married for forty years, us. Owen. That's what happens when you stay. Don't get married. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right, I'll just stay single. What were we talking about? I do have a question. <laughs> oh, oh well, yes. let's talk about ne Neanderthals. And I can't believe you guys haven't introduced Neanderthals into your show. Well, season four. Yeah, I, I don't. Th I don't think we did it, but it was very specific. Also, like we weren't. We're, we were down there for like a very short period of time, relatively speaking. 
in terms of like, you know, I would have thought like, there'd be backlash from the Neanderthals well, out there picketing. But, but Kenny, Neanderthals. <laughs> well, <laughs> <could've been. laughs> no, wait, wait, wait. Let's let's dig into this here. So uh, Neanderthals are what ten thousand BC, basically. Well, or, if you Google it, it gives you the why. Uh, and and is that, you that where you are? It gives you the, the time targets? frame. It gives you the time frame. Is that where you are? Are you specific in in La Brea as to what time period? Uh, yeah, ten thousand years ago. Ten thousand yeah, BC. Yeah, ten thousand BC. Okay. Well, we're all we're all googling this. We're all we're all currently googling. I mean, the, Neanderthals were around for a very long span, and a part of that span Not included ten thousand BC. Neanderthal. Okay, uh -huh. Neanderthal. So, well, all right. <clears throat> no, you see, no, I, I think you're wrong, Eric. It says they they are, you can they live until forty thousand years. ago. Oh, they didn't make it to ten thousand. No, they. they yes, they, that is correct. They didn't. I have the it. same thing right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are, oh, are, okay, I apologize. Yeah, so you're wrong. I, I, I apologize. You know, but you're you are wrong. correct. Well, you'd think there'd be a couple of stray Neanderthal that might have made it to ten thousand BC. I think that would be a fun storyline. You know, they did. Yeah. They did and, try. They did. They did try and make a show for Hulu um, years ago because they actually shot it in Ireland. It was actually set forty thousand years ago. There wasn't also a movie forty thousand BC as well. Just that like I have not heard. I don't know. But... Um, but I can't remember the name of that show. But they tried to shoot that show in Ireland. I have some buddies yeah. who on it, and that was all set with you. Anyway, anyway, wait. Anyway, I apologize. But we digress. But I think you know, hopefully we'll get the Neanderthal demo. <laughs> right. Um, so I was looking at clips of your interviews, and you oftentimes get asked about your characters to explain your characters. Right. And I was wondering if that was boring. <laughs> because <laughs> and if it is, don't explain them now. Well, because to me it's like they ask these questions and you have to sit there and explain it. And I would think it's in the work. You know right. what I'm saying? Not to have to like go, well, my character is this and my character. Does that kind of I don't know if you feel that way. I kind of was thinking to myself, boy, as an actor, I have to keep explaining the, your character over and over again. That doesn't, I didn't, it seemed to me that it would be drudgery. You know, you know I remember, so, so the very, very first, first interview I ever did on television, I was like in my early 20s. And I went on, I went on this Irish TV show and I just, I just studied acting in New York and I'd studied Meisner and I thought I knew everything about it. And I'd studied cinematography and I thought I was like understood all about film. And they asked me about a character I'd just done on this show. And I think I talked for like six minutes about this character. And I thought I, I thought I'd given this really great detailed answer that was really interesting. And I came home and I, I was staying with my mom for a couple of weeks my mom was like, she, she, I came back and she was like, oh, I watched it. I was like, oh, great. She goes, okay. Um, she goes, I'm going to put on some tea. She goes, um, you're going to sit down and, and you're going to watch it. And I was like, no, no, I don't need to. She goes, no, 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 you're, you're going to sit down and you're going to watch it. And she put it on and she gave me a cup of tea. And she goes, now just, just sit there and watch it. And I was like, oh, I, 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 this must be great. And I watched it with her and it was so fucking boring. And, and she said, to, she goes, Let's watch it again. And I was like, what the fuck? I don't want to watch it again. She goes, never do that ever again. She goes, nobody cares. Because it was so boring. Because I just spent all this time talking about the character and about my work and about the techniques I thought I'd studied and all this stuff. And I bored the shit out of myself. <laughs> but so, you asked that question almost in every one of the clips that I saw. You asked that question over and over and over again. I, I, I you are asked that question. You try and just kind of just I just I don't know. I mean, it depends on what it is. I guess if you're asking Heath Ledger about his process and when you play the Joker or, or, or something, well, maybe that's a bad example. Sorry, but you know, there's certain certain I guess parts that you really want to know how people went into that place. But mm -hmm. I think otherwise, otherwise, I'm with you. I don't think I think it's more about the process of what what the creation of what an overall show and the dynamics and all that type of stuff. I don't think people really want to know the, the intricacies of what you were, what you were thinking. Well, it also, to me, it's self-evident. If you, if you want to know what the character is, watch the performance. Yeah. I think so. It, yeah. Like I saw the awe in your eyes at the 12 meter high dinosaur. There you the go. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he was, he was actually. Oh, and oh, and we have a, we have a viewer who's asking a question right now. Wants to know oh. about what, what's uh, we don't have any viewers right now. 
Uh, but <laughs> actually, yeah, that would have been nice. e explain explain your uh, oh, your interesting so this, piece around well, here. My, my mom got me that in Egypt, and I was like fourteen years old. It was like a protection symbol under the sun. And then that was my that was my late father's wedding ring. So my mom gave me that. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that's beautiful. I've always I've just always worn two of those. Do you try now to you... keep it on even when you're in costume? I mean, for various things, do you I, take I, it I, off I as little it, as I possible. I wore it for a couple of things. I think I, I think I wore it for Merlin and a few other projects, but generally I take it off. But I, I've been wearing it for so long that I'm just, I'm just used oh, to it. Oh, it's very wearing. touching. That's cool. Yeah. I'm glad uh, I'm glad the viewer asked the question. Yeah, me you too. Did... Me too. Hey, viewer, thank you for thank you for watching. <laughs> you did a show. That took place in the future. Was that Night Flyers? That was Night Flyers, yeah. That took place in the future. Now you're doing yeah. a show. How far in the future? In... Fuck, Night Flyers? 40,000 years? I mean, you, I, I, you I, might I, have I, the widest span of character time of any yeah. actor I've ever known. I know. I actually don't know. I actually don't know how far. Night Flyers is quite far in the future. I can't remember when, though. All I know okay. is we, we, and, we, and now we, you we, And now you're back in time. Here's my question, yeah. gentlemen. Yeah. If you could time travel which way would you go well well neither of those are particularly fun like night flyers was a horror sci-fi no thing. but That's forget forget well. going into i'm and not saying you i'm not oh, saying you going back it. into I, that i'm movie. going to answer that question i probably i would I'd go probably, back i probably go with the, i probably go with like the I, yeah i go back in time to like the 70s or the 80s or something i would like go that. back really? to my childhood in the 60s no kidding no. You go back in to a childhood? heartbeat you could you could give me the pill right now to do that, and I would say, "See you guys, I'm out of here." Why why, why would you want to go back to your childhood? I, uh, well, it, it could simply talk, be the time of life. <laughs> it could simply be the time of life when you're a child and and the world is so magical. You wouldn't but want to go back to a time in history when when you to, to, out of curiosity back to uh, a time in history. No, when you were I want there. to go back to the feelings. I I've been in this time and I've been in that time, so I can compare the two. I, I would like to get rid of some of the technology. I'd like to go back to the simplicity. We played outdoors, our relationship. Right. Let me rephrase were, the question. More, so, so Let me rephrase I, I the question to be more specific. Gary, but, but, but Gary, what happens if you went back in time to your childhood and then realized that it wasn't really idyllic because when you were a child, you saw everything better and you went back and it kind of sucked? Yeah. Well, I, that, I, well would, at least then, I know what's changed your entire of concept of yourself the rest of your life yeah i mean that's the risk you'd take but then i guess i'd sit around and wait to be 66 again and you know i i, yeah. I know at least i know and then we'd have hey, to do I, this whole podcast I, I would buy i would play the lottery a lot i'll tell you that yeah um, well yeah I, but I, 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 can i just can i just i, I just want to okay, uh, yeah. get to this, this your question kenny and the question is this if you could live in a time when you were not alive okay in the past and you certainly weren't alive in the future Basically, what I'm saying: Would you time travel to the past, or would you time travel to the future? I mean, I, I'd go to the past. You would, would right away, huh? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Would you okay. like to know why? Yes, I do. I don't know what the future has in store. It could be a sinkhole, for all I know. Yeah. I don't know what the yeah. future is. Even without air conditioning, I can at least imagine riding horseback in a carriage and, and or, or whatever. There are things that I can reference and. And deal with, yeah, and understand. And I'm and, and I'd be I'd be with you because I'd also like you don't know what's going to happen with climate change or like you know you could you could say go ten years in the future there might be no rhinos and no lions left you could go back a hundred years ago and like, yes you know, but here's 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 a dilemma for me. Okay, I hope you want to go into the future at least. I do want to go into the future. I've got a really here. good answer to this, Kenny. I would go into the future because at least I know there would be hygiene. There'd be showers, there'd be toilets, <laughs> there'd be air conditioning. I don't know. know I don't know how anybody lived in the past. How anybody lived in the past without all of those? Air the idea that I have to go outside to a latrine, or I didn't have running water, or there was no air conditioning—that to me is uncomfortable. I don't know. Have you have you seen have you seen Terminator? Because if you go into the future, I don't know if they're going to have like you know running water and stuff. It looks right. like everything. The apocalypse. Like, excuse me. Have, I think have the you Terminator. Been attention. The this Terminator world could be I, destroyed. The guy yep. who played the Terminator when he came down, he was well dressed and he was clean cut and he looked he was very robot. very well quaffed. Yeah, because he yes, was a robot. He, he was clean. He was. He was, he was, clean. <laughs> he was clean. He was. It was a beautiful leather coat. I'm just saying, I probably would go to the future. I understand that. Yeah, I understand right. that. 
So you're, me, you're, you're, your stipulations here are basically hygiene and, and, and temperature. My comfort. My stipulation is, comfort. is my right. comfort. Kenny, it's That's comfort. all I care about if, as long as I'm it's comfortable. Good. I believe that I would bitch and moan a little while about crapping in a latrine and then kind of get used to it in two and a half weeks. Oh, yeah. That's the way and how would you like it? And how would you like it? When you get sick and they go, oh, you know how we're going to fix you? Let's put we're these leeches your on off. your back. We're going to put leeches well, no, on your it's, back. It's, it's fine. They just get some dog hair and they just ship me. Yeah, right. right. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hair of the dog. Yeah. Okay. Hair of the dog. It's, all, it's, it's, it's a good question. And we put it to the viewers. Please send yeah. us your thoughts. Would you uh, go back in time? or? Okay. I got future? another one. Are you okay. ready for another one? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Would you rather be die from... Uh, but being hot or die from being cold? Oh, and oh you go first. I, I, I don't want to die from being hot. I don't want to die from being cold. I would definitely die from being cold. No. Oh, no. That's awful. I hate no, 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 no. Gary? Well, die, well, in a fire? I mean, are we talking about a fire? No, huh? you know, you have all these things. Can't you just answer them? Simple. It's heat not a fire. You're not. I, I think I would rather die from heat. Cold is yeah. horrible. Cold. Yeah. Okay, let me tell you Although why cold they is the say there's a go. euphoria that kicks in Forget when you fr- when you freeze to death. I'll tell you they the say, reason. Course, I'll I tell you why you guys got it wrong. Because they died. I'll tell you why you guys got it wrong. Well, have you seen Last of the Mohicans? Remember the Last of the Mohicans when the guy yeah, dies yeah. in the fire? That didn't look like fun. That did no, not look. I'm like not fun, talking about fire. I'm just talking about sweltering heat. Like oh my god, it's so You're walking in the desert. You're walking and, and, in the desert, and, and you, and you, you die. Heat prostration. Well, then, that, well, then, well then, then I go with then I go being in the desert. I remember actually Jared was working on a project. You can ask him about it. We did a project in the Mojave Desert about eight or nine years ago, and Harry was working on it too. And Jared actually got heat stroke on that, and we yes, had to bring right. him to hospital. Yeah, that's yeah, right. and and a couple of us, a couple of them got heat stroke. I was really happy not because he got heat stroke, but because <laughs> I was so hot, and, and I I love the heat, and I would you know I much prefer to like be in a sweltering desert. And I'll tell you why I think both of you made the wrong choice. I do I do remember that Jared went Jared went to work the next day after that, and I have no idea how because uh, he'd been in hospital getting an ID. Well, drip that's in the desert and... that's why I'd rather go, die in the cold. And the reason is this, is because they do cryogenics. So if they, you freeze to death, there is the possibility you have to freeze. You have to be frozen in half a second. Whatever I'm just saying, you're that's slowly now, dying, but not in the future. Maybe in the future, in the, so like Hatchet that, Jack in 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 Jeremiah Johnson, you slowly die. Now they do say, I repeat, that there's a euphoria as your body. I, I see down. what's happening. It even creates guys. warmth in your mind. Do, do you do you remember? Do you remember? Wasn't there that movie? Was Brendan Fraser? Didn't he play the Neanderthal that was frozen yeah, and came right. alive? Yes, this, I this, just this, watched. This is, good. this is all going full circle for Kenny. Yes. Oh wow! Happened. I had not realized that, Owen. Yeah, yeah. Those things this are is, all put together. Yeah, that's where I got the, that's they, they, that's what shaped you a get lot. Your ideas. That shaped a lot of my opinions. There you go. Fascinating, <laughs> fascinating. It's your well, question, though. Um. Okay. Um. Well, you know what? Maybe we should ask Owen some questions. <laughs> So people can find oh, you, about You don't him. want me to participate? No, I do. I think you that should. What you're saying? Him. No, I think you should. I think I want Owen to answer. Owen, I think all of America wants to know, what's your next project? Oh, I have no idea. Ah, well, there you go, America. Let's move on. No, yeah. that's the name of the project. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> he plays a Neanderthal who up. freezes to death yeah, exactly. and <laughs> is rediscovered 40,000 years later. And has no um, idea what's going on. Exactly. It's 40,000 years later and discovers that there's hygiene and there's air conditioning and it's all. <laughs> can, I, can, I, can I propose, maybe I, I, I would like to write this, uh, Owen Mackin stars in I Married a Neanderthal. Yeah. You meet a girl. <laughs> I reckon I reckon there's probably a movie. I'm going to check right now. I reckon there's yeah, put, put that movie. in there. And, and he <laughs> was sure a Croatian is. Neanderthal. Uh-huh. And he could only say, Ya ima veliki kurat. Hmm. Do you know? No, there's, there's, there's no movie, but there is a book about it. Mm. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can buy it on Barnes and Noble. Yeah. Speaking of time, <laughs> we're out of it. Mm-hmm. Come on, that was good. That, that was, was very, that was smooth. very that smooth. That was very smooth. We are out of time, so uh, we want to thank our very special guest, Owen Mackin. Uh, it's been such a joy talking to you, Owen, because we've been trying for so long. Uh, your, your work is spectacular. Your success is 
wonderful to watch, and uh, it's been a lot of fun. You and so when I show time. up in Dublin, I hope you will. <laughs> you know. I will. I see. I'll see you in the Guinness factory. You both go and explore some. All right. So it's to our pleasure, to, Gary. to Gary. all our fans, we are on all popular podcast platforms. We are on DBTV, which is streaming, and we have a YouTube channel, The Gary and Kenny Show. Please give us a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll love. Uh, we'd love to hear your comments. Until next time, so long. I'm Gary. That's Kenny. And wherever Owen may be, say goodbye. Bye-bye. Thank you, folks. Cheers, guys.